Hello, welcome to a special episode of Cartoon Graveyard. So it's going to be a bit different than normal. Rather than letting me talk um, and draw at the same time for a request, I'm going to show you a speeded up version of a of a more intimate drawing, and I'm going to basically narrate along like a DVD extra. So, trying to join me inside, and we'll see how it goes. So here we go. So this is a nice picture of Skullgirl. Um, now, the character I created for Skullgirl, I decided that um, she was a bit of a loner librarian, uh, Miss Skullgirl. And um, before she was introduced to the demon trapped in a skull, which she then wears, which can make, makes her more extrovert rather than introvert. And I wanted her to have a background. I wanted her to be quite into keep fit and bits and pieces like this. Now, as you can see from the picture that I've drawn so far, I roughly sketch in using um, the electronics. Um, I roughly sketch in a background. So you can see the figures behind in the very light grey. And there you go there, just having a, a better look at it. Now, that means I can sketch in where I want things to be. And then by switching through layers, I can take those out and so for instance the ropes and the corner of the ring here and a stool for her to sit on um, i'm going to sketch in and i can see where they would go now these are going to be pretty much obliterated by the character when it sat down um, you can see that i've gone over the lines of skull girl already and now i'm going over the lines of her manager so this is very much based on the the characters that you get standing around in the edge of uh, a gym you can see straight away that by going over the lines you then make different decisions so if you look at the cigar the cigar has changed position several times uh, when i first drew it i drew it with my sensibilities if i was speaking to someone um, I don't smoke um, anymore, um, I used to, but when I spoke to people, I would actually move the cigarette um, off to one side um, when I smoked a pipe. Yeah, I smoked a pipe. I know, pretentious, isn't it? So when I smoked a pipe, um, I would take the pipe out and hold the smoke out of the way so it didn't blow in people's faces. I decided quite... So when I drew this picture, you can see that the the there is an, an image of the cigar going off towards the manager's ear, away from Skullgirl. Um, now, when I decided to go back and redraw it, um, I thought, no, this this isn't me, this is a manager. He doesn't care that so, like, smoke's blowing in her face. She's supposed to be introverted. She's not someone that people care about. So the cigar moves where it's comfortable for him and maybe not comfortable for her. Now, this is one of those kind of also ran could have been a contender boxes um and uh, i really wanted this to uh, this character to have a background now you tell yourself stories when you're drawing um about these people now skull girl i'd clearly got a background story for but these two guys said they, they were just figures they're they're just to give her a background they're not part of her life but i decided that the guy with the sponge and the water bottle was uh, going to be a an also ran um, someone that didn't quite cut it as a boxer, or maybe they did, and uh, they've had one too many fights, and they now need to be left alone. So I gave him the background story of being a bit of a. He was going to be my um, sailor character. So if you actually look at his forearms, he's got very large forearms, and very much a quarter pop on it. Now. When you're going through things, I'm not very good with colour. I'm colour blind. Um, you may have seen from the other like, kind of live drawings that uh, I stop and colour in. I still don't take much time over colouring. I want the whole picture that you see to be something which which disappears quite quickly um, and um, or is done quite quickly to show that these things can be done um, and give you an idea of it. And this is going four times the speed you can see i'm skipping backwards and forwards but because i'm not into color um if i'm trying to give texture um to a picture i'll 
I'll often give it a background of greys. Um, it's where I feel, it's where my comfort zone is and where I feel a lot more comfortable. Now, the good thing about working with this, I'm working with Clip Studio here. It's a program I very much recommend. If you're into illustration um, rather than fine art, a lot of us muddle around with Photoshop, PaintShop Pro, things like that. But Clip, Clip Studio is one of those programs which definitely seems to be designed for illustrators in mind. It's got a lot better feel to it. It's a lot more it's a lot more how when you're drawing traditional art you would normally draw um, but of course you've got all the whistles and bells then of electronic art as well i can zoom right in on this obviously i can bring things up i can get rid of the background we're concentrating very much on skull girl here and um, i can do a lot more detail uh, and have a lot more think about it this is one of the things that really uh, made me laugh when I did the lips, um, just fleshing out the lips as I just did then, it, it took away some of the character. And you'll see that I'll, I'll very quickly go back to that. Now, with it sped up, you'll see how quickly I go back even with it sped up. But there's got to be weight to everything. Um, and as you can see from the shoots, you can see there's real pushing down on the heels. It's, uh, there's weight going on to that. But I am not happy with that mouth, um, uh, with the whole facial features thing. Um, so there we go. I'm going to zoom right in and do this bandage across her nose, make her the fighter. But the mouth will start playing on my mind. <laughs> You'll see how quickly it, it starts. It's, it's like I didn't want to touch it, and then, then I take it out. Um, have another play with it. Give it a little bit more character. Um, it needs to be more there we go she's she's got a lip so if you've got if you can have a, a gum shield in or anything like that she's probably boxing um there's got to be more definition to the mouth I, I was a lot more happy with it still not 100 percent happy with it um but a little bit of a uh, bristle for underarm hair there she's she's that kind of girl so like i said she's she's pretty much a loner so if you're a loner the things you do you do for yourself so um i quite like the fact that there would be that that bristle of underarm here so here we are we're going back to this character as i said um un unknown unnamed um and uh definitely had a, a better play around with it you start taking out the details um, that you've put in from the sketching, um, you really concentrate more on on how the character looks and start giving them personality. These little bits of unshaven parts, the the fact that the jumper isn't isn't perfect. This is a man that's potentially down on his luck. It's rough and ready. It's it's the kind of jumper that someone would wear that that didn't become the main star. He's got his little sponge there. I always love the magic sponges in every sport. So you've, you've got to appreciate the fact that, that there is someone, not not just the fact that so like a sponge will get someone up from what seems like a horrific injury, but the fact that there is someone whose job it is um, to come forward with that magic sponge. Um, now this is still sketchy. You can see that although I've got rid of the um, the grey lines here and I'm having a little bit more fun with it, he's almost a character in his own right. Now we know he's part of a bigger picture. There you go. And there's a bigger picture. So, <laughs> but he's part of a character in his own right. And um, and it's it's interesting when you're doing this um, layer thing and you can drop people in and out of pictures that they stop being also rant. You drop everybody out and they become as important as the other characters in your picture, which means you give them the respect they deserve. And that's really nice. When you're doing traditional art, you see the whole picture at all times. So therefore, you don't have to step back and have another look. Um, and so therefore, it all works as a whole. 
But if you took the pe pictures, the parts individually to an artist, they, they wouldn't quite work as well. Now, with electronic art, being able to drop things out is fantastic. It's um, It really means you can concentrate on a character. And then the people that you are seeing as so Rand, they have more of a personality and you start changing things about them. Now I want to talk about the pen I'm using as well. So I know I talk about this a lot, but this is the XP Pen Artist 12. I'm not sponsored by these people. I make this very clear. I had to do a lot of research myself when I was doing this. And uh, this this pen, as you can see, has got a real quality of line. It's it's not the most expensive pen on the market, but it allows you to draw directly onto the tablet. If you are a traditional artist, this not having to disassociate yourself from where your hand is and where your eye is looking is fantastic. It means that you can really concentrate on the picture in front of you. It takes a little bit of getting used to using a, a, a shiny screen, um, but it gives you what you really need. It gives you that 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 clarity um, uh, to your picture. I couldn't recommend the XP Artist 12 enough. There you go. I'm just get, throwing in a little bit of extra colour there, so <laughs> you'll see all my my working lines. Sometimes when I'm doing it, I I can switch between um, the blacks and the whites. Sometimes I use the rubber. The XP pen. You, it's a nice proper pen. When you flip it over, you put an eraser on one end. You're erasing directly. Um, you can you've got a click on button on the side, so you can you can click between the colours, um, which is what I regularly do. Um, I like to have the white and the black when I'm doing things like this. And then I, rather than rather than erasing, I'm actually almost tipexing out. Um, so liquid paper to uh, I think it's a liquid paper um, to copy decks. Is that what you call it? I don't know. In in the UK we call it we call it Tipex, or it's a brand name is Tipex or liquid paper. But um, it really allows you to to get a good feel for it. Now, as you can see here, I've dropped everything out. Um, I've gone back to the ropes, um, and uh, I can play properly um, with something you're never even going to see. It's going to disappear. But it is really good peace of mind. The being able to highlight as you would with electronic, drop characters in, sit for a moment, see how they work, look at your characters again, play around with them. It's, it's invaluable. Um, and Sorry, so this is a picture of Skullgirl. What I do is, is I keep other pictures open. I'm colorblind. I think I've mentioned this so many times. But so for me, it's quite difficult to get colors right um, and get them the same. Once I know I've got a color very well and something I really like, I do love the fact this is switching between the two so quickly uh, <laughs> as I get the colors. So so I'm taking the colours off of an old picture. Now these are colours I've decided myself. And these are things that I'm having a play with. Um, but you, you will get the character. Um, you will get... So this is me showing you how it all builds up. So I've gone back. I've shown you the, uh, the characters appearing, disappearing. The lines I use... Um, and just flipping between them. It's like flicking backwards and forwards, um, giving yourself a little bit of uh, your own animation. And don't forget you're seeing this at speed. So when I do this, is there's a lot of long pausing. So like if something seems like it's only taken a little while, it's a proper long pause for me um, as I contemplate things. So... This is me realising I'm, I'm playing around. I, as I said, these are bit part characters. They've not really got personalities. I'm not 100% happy with them. And you'll see in a minute, 
just how unhappy with them I am. But I go through different colours, um, different flesh tones, having a proper play with them, um, trying to find the people within the characters um, and uh, where that's coming from. So there you go. That's that's it. That's that's the video stopped as I as far as I got. Now you can tell that there's more going going to be going on here. Um, I'm not a hundred percent happy. And um, what I'm going to do now is you've seen the process. I'm going to show you the finished piece, so you'll be able to enjoy this. As, as its complete conclusion, but gives you a bit of an insight as to uh, how it gets to this stage in the first So here you go, the Cartoon Graveyard Cram Reveal, um, and there we go. And you can see, <laughs> I think you may see changes straight away. Um, <laughs> my two guys, they, they changed completely. The, the entire time I was doing it, I wasn't happy. Um, with the characters um, and um, Skullgirl this is supposed to be a life beforehand but I like the fact that there's always been demons in our background um, that's the world she lives in I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on this picture for you so just to give you a, the proper process there's a, the Skullgirl logo there and um, you can see that the personalities. This is a nice thing about layers: is uh, you can you can play around um, and go back over the top. the The characters are still the same. They still have the same uh, the same premise to them, but uh, they've now got this this otherworldly uh, otherworldly feel. So I'm going to zoom in and out, uh, <laughs> but um, they've. They've definitely become something different. But there you go. Um, it shows you the joy of being able to, to colour, to be able to move around. Um, and uh, hopefully you now get some better insight into the, uh, the world of, of drawing. And um, there you go. Skullgirl. <laughs> Ever Skull t-shirt on, by the way. Uh, Everlast is the boxing in for anyone that's... Uh, struggling to find out why I did that logo. But there you go, Skullgirl um, and uh, her water monster, a water demon, and uh, her manager demon. There. So um, I hope you've enjoyed that little run through the world that is uh, electronic art. Thank you very much to. The XP Pen Artist 12 for allowing me to do this. Thank you very much for Clip Studio um, for being able to do this. I very much recommend them both to anybody that wants to, to try them out. But there you go. Um, a little bit of electronic art. Thank you. So there you go. So that's a, a little bit of cartoon graveyard magic. A longer picture probably a little bit more intimate than the, the pictures I normally draw but um, it just goes to show you a little bit more insight into where we're going it's been a pleasure having you here with me again um, it's a uh, very very late hence uh, my quite rough sounding voice at the moment but um, please if you have suggestions of your own requests um, then please give me a request <laughs> that sounds like a request coming in as we speak um but um also hit the subscribe button down below and uh, i hope to see you next time in the cartoon graveyard bye bye